The interior of a classroom with a large inflatable tent set up inside. In this video, situations happen to several women and girls. At the beginning, a dark-haired woman wearing a navy blue dress and slightly translucent nude tights completely removes black imitation or leather ballerinas with red interiors from both legs. At the same time, a young girl with dyed red hair takes off her nude ballerinas. On her feet, however, she has plain black socks. Next to her, we also see a slightly more visible woman without shoes and wearing grey tights or similar socks or knee highs on her feet. At the end of the fifth minute, black imitation leather or leather wedge pumps are hurriedly removed from the feet by a young, dark blonde haired girl who is also wearing dark tights or socks made of nylon or other similar material. In the middle of the seventh minute, the show begins with a woman with long dark hair wearing a grey dress and wearing flesh-coloured semi-sheer tights and black ballerinas with patterns. She sits on a chair and, keeping her feet on the ground, partially removes her shoes. More often he does it with the right shoe. At the end of the video, the woman in the navy blue dress puts her ballerinas back on. Can trees really communicate with each other? Analysis of previous research. A review of research on mycorrhizal fungi concluded that there is not enough evidence to support the popular claims that trees can communicate with each other through the subterranean network of the delicate filaments of these fungi. This concept even got its name, referring to the internet, Wood Wide Web. However, scientists remain skeptical about it. The idea that trees in forests can talk to each other, share resources and protect their seedlings through an underground network of delicate mycorrhizal fungal filaments captures the imagination. However, in a publication published in the journal, Nature Ecology and Evolution, Professor Justine Cast of the University of Alberta in Canada disputes these claims. It's great that research on mycorrhizal networks has sparked interest in forest fungi. However, the public should understand that many popular theories are far from science, says Professor Cast. Mycorrhizal fungi coexist with plant roots. These relationships are believed to be beneficial for trees and fungi and lead to the formation of extensive networks. In recent years, this idea has been popularized through books and documentaries. And while these mushrooms are important, some popular claims about their potential are exaggerated. Cast. Along with Melanie Jones of the University of British Columbia and Jason Hoaxman of the University of Mississippi, reviewed more than 1,500 existing field studies of mycorrhizal networks. And although the existence of mycorrhizal networks has been scientifically proven, the possibilities attributed to them turned out to be worse. Researchers looked at three popular claims. One that mycorrhizal networks are widespread in forests, another that transfers resources from adult trees to seedlings, and one that suggests that trees send warning signals to their fellows. After careful analysis, the researchers concluded that there was insufficient evidence to suggest that mycorrhizal networks are widespread. They may be, but so far there have been only five studies on the subject, and they have looked at only two species out of more than 70,000 tree species on Earth. Scientists also have no knowledge of the structure of these networks and their exact functions. It is also doubtful that nutrients are transferred from adult trees to seedlings via mycorrhizal networks, which would increase the survival and growth of young plants. A review of 26 different field studies found that resources can be carried underground by trees, but fungi do not necessarily cause this flow. Young seedlings are also not usually connected to mycorrhizal networks. By contrast, 
the claim that adult trees send warning signals of insect damage to young trees via fungi is not supported by a single peer-reviewed field study, notes Professor Cast. According to the researchers, exaggerated information can distort the narrative about mycorrhizal networks, which in turn can affect how forests are managed. Analysis of the field studies showed that the results of the work were too variegated, had alternative explanations, or were too limited to support the aforementioned claims. Mycorrhiza, i.e., the coexistence of fungi with plant roots, applies not only to trees. Most mycorrhizal fungi live entirely underground. Existing only as almost invisible thread-like filaments, called hyphae, that appear to grow from plant roots. These threads form extensive networks in the soil that can connect plants to each other. By allowing the fungus to live on the roots, the plants receive the necessary nutrients from the soil, and the absorptive surface area of the roots is increased. In return, the mushrooms receive the fruits of photosynthesis, sugars and fats. In 1997, scientists showed that carbon, the primary source of energy for all life, could be transported between trees through a mycorrhizal network. This finding sparked speculation that mycorrhizal fungi help trees communicate and share resources. Cooperation seemed more important than competition, a concept that challenged the dominant evolutionary dogma. With regard to the publication in Nature Ecology and Evolution, Professor Katie Field and Dr. Emily McCurry-Lee from the University of Sheffield said the evidence was inconclusive and more research was needed. The researchers pointed out a mistake in media citation, where positive effects are reported more often and more willingly by editorial offices. Exaggerated claims about experimental results can become subject to even greater misinterpretation over time. This leads to citing scientific studies to document effects that were not even claimed by their authors. But the researchers also pointed out that there is some evidence of communication and resource sharing between plants via mycorrhizal fungi. In the conversation, they mentioned research that appeared in ecology letters. They showed that fungi act as conduits for transmitting defense signals, at least between some types of plants. In experiments, this helped bean plants prepare for aphid attacks, while those plants whose fungal network was destroyed failed to protect themselves. However, what these signals are and how they are transmitted remains a mystery. Other experiments, published in Plant and Soil and New Phytologist, showed the movement of carbon and water between Japanese pine and Scots pine seedlings under controlled laboratory conditions. In turn, field experiments the results of which were published in New Phytologist showed that there is a network because the dye used in the experiments moved between the yellow pine seedlings through mycorrhizal fungi. In conclusion, the researchers admitted that the function of mycorrhizal networks in forests may be overestimated. However, there is not enough research on this subject and it is difficult to make any reliable claims on this subject. The world beneath our feet is easily overlooked, and as a result, soil ecology is often neglected. The interior of a classroom with a large inflatable tent set up inside. In this video, situations happen to several women and girls. At the beginning, a dark-haired woman wearing a navy blue dress and slightly translucent nude tights completely removes black imitation or leather ballerinas with red interiors from both legs. At the same time, a young girl with dyed red hair takes off her nude ballerinas. 
On her feet, however, she has plain black socks. Next to her, we also see a slightly more visible woman without shoes and wearing gray tights or similar socks or knee highs on her feet. At the end of the fifth minute, black imitation leather or leather wedge pumps are hurriedly removed from the feet by a young, dark blonde haired girl who is also wearing dark tights or socks made of nylon or other similar material. In the middle of the seventh minute, the show begins with a woman with long dark hair wearing a grey dress and wearing flesh-coloured semi-sheer tights and black ballerinas with patterns. She sits on a chair and, keeping her feet on the ground, partially removes her shoes. More often he does it with the right shoe. At the end of the video, the woman in the navy blue dress puts her ballerinas back on. The interior of a classroom with a large inflatable tent set up inside. In this video, situations happen to several women and girls. At the beginning, a dark-haired woman wearing a navy blue dress and slightly translucent nude tights completely removes black imitation or leather ballerinas with red interiors from both legs. At the same time, a young girl with dyed red hair takes off her nude ballerinas. On her feet, however, she has plain black socks. Next to her, we also see a slightly more visible woman without shoes and wearing grey tights or similar socks or knee highs on her feet. At the end of the fifth minute, black imitation leather or leather wedge pumps are hurriedly removed from the feet by a young, dark blonde haired girl who is also wearing dark tights or socks made of nylon or other similar material. In the middle of the seventh minute, the show begins with a woman with long dark hair wearing a grey dress and wearing flesh-coloured semi-sheer tights and black ballerinas with patterns. She sits on a chair and, keeping her feet on the ground, partially removes her shoes. More often he does it with the right shoe. At the end of the video, the woman in the navy blue dress puts her ballerinas back on.